18th and 19th centuries, and, and both in Europe and in America, music was basically an accomplishment, and something like needlepoint and watercolor mm -hmm. that uh, the rising middle class uh, women learned to ensnare a good husband. One thing that Jane Austen uh, mentioned in one of her books is that one shouldn't be too good as a woman performer. You know, because you shouldn't draw attention to yourself, and and that would be considered egocentric and, you know, taking away from the luster of your husband mm -hmm. or whatever. So, so women always, there was a sexism, I mean, a sociological disadvantage, mm -hmm. big time. I mean, all through, not to generalize too much, but before, I don't know, the 18th, 19th century, when women actually started studying more, while there were successful female pianists during the 18th and 19th centuries, many of them had a serious advantage from growing up in families that were active in the music and performance world. Even so, these women still could not gain the notoriety and popularity of their male colleagues. For example, Fanny Mendelssohn's compositions were published under her brother Felix's name simply because she was a woman. The, the whole idea of the piano and its size becoming by 1900 really more compatible for the large hand. Probably statistically, most women were under five feet, tiny, mm -hmm. tiny little women. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't have played a concert grand anyway. When this shift occurred with European and American pianos, Carol Leone is the great researcher on this at Southern Methodist, but she claims in her article that the conventional size as we know it, like this, was really finally was etched in stone, you might say, around 1890-1900 to accommodate the European and Russian and Eastern European large male virtuosi. The most prominent male pianists at the time were Paderewski, Rachmaninoff, and Liszt, who all had very large hands, as you can hopefully see from the pictures of them. It's the only one of those big virtuosi, turn of the century and, and earlier, early 20th century, that was smaller in size, known to be, was Josef Hoffmann. Um, he had a piano built for him at Steinway's in New York. And it was smaller, and he played on it all the time. A letter from Steinway and Sons to Hanover University's Dr. Christopher Wagner states that the keyboard on the piano Josef Hoffmann commissioned to Steinway to make was 3.5 centimeters shorter than that of a normal keyboard. As you can see, Hoffman's range on a traditional piano is quite small for a man, since he could only reach a little over an octave comfortably. The pianos that Liszt, Chopin were playing on were somewhat smaller than the keyboards, and they were lighter, too. Mm -hmm. Since the piano that we play on today is even bigger than the 19th century instrument, it is even more difficult for women and men with smaller hands to play the big virtuosic romantic literature, and that is very unfortunate. Oh, some people are stepping up to the plate and saying, listen, this, this should change. Unfortunately, not enough. The main reason, it's economical. But I think that's changing. There is a real problem in creating an action where the regular action, say, of the Steinway could be pulled out and then another action could be put in, which had smaller keys, is that if they're smaller keys, it means the hammers are going to have to wedge in. There's going to have mm -hmm. to be um, a change in the physics of the hammers, and so you don't get as much power. Most pianists want, first and foremost, is a piano that feels great and sounds great. And you can't have a compromised, inferior sounding or feeling mm -hmm. instrument. I think we're going to make some real progress mm -hmm. um, now that people are much more aware. You don't ask a female golfer to take large male clubs. Mm -hmm. They don't even compete with men. They're not expected yeah. to drive a certain amount down the fairway. When we walk out on stage and play Rachmaninoff Etude, you're supposed to get just as much volume mm -hmm. as some, some guy that's a foot taller than you and weighs 100 pounds more. Mm -hmm. And I don't know any other field where the playing field is so unlevel. I mean, one of the biggest responses when, when my smaller handed that don't fit where there's not a fit they'll sit down at that instrument or any smaller keyboard that fits their hand which just a good fit and they start playing they start crying because they're not working so hard mm -hmm. you know 
they just start crying. Like suddenly they realize there was a whole world there that, and all that, all that effort and effort and effort to do what they were doing to compete with people whose hands were compatible with the size of the keyboard. It's just like, why did we have to do this mm -hmm. when we could have been doing so much more? In the next clip, Anna Fedorova is performing Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto in C minor on a normal sized piano. It is easy to see that she has to overextend the joints in her fingers to reach the intervals. When playing, her shoulders and neck are very tense, which suggests that playing this piece was not the most comfortable experience and it was probably due to the large piano that she was playing on. Next, Mi Yoon Kim is going to play the same piece on a smaller piano whose octave is 6 inches, as opposed to the normal 6.4596 inches. While it is a small difference, it does make a difference, especially since this pianist does not have to overextend her fingers to reach the large chords. <laughs> 